just if you have somebody who can be there on time, even early, and finish their job, how much more that would mean for your organization. That's what we bring to the table, y'all. We bring so much more than what you maybe what you got. Speaking of bringing more to the table, we got some guys from Coke. There is still a little They're over there. Coke Industries, right? And so I haven't met these guys yet, so I have to read off here. Steve Tillery and I'm getting old boy. Victor Dennis. Sorry, sir. All right, Steve and Victor, and they're from Coke Industries, and they're the talent solution guys. Talent solution, that's a big name, all right? So give these guys a hand. Before I get started, I want to do a quick survey to see if you know anything about our company. Uh, how many of you have heard of Coke Industries before? Show of hands. Oh, great. Right. Very good. Yes, Steve and I really want to thank you for allowing us to come uh, spend some time to share what we've done in the space around attracting talent in the military community. So what I wanted to do before I kind of go into our spiel as we did our strategy session, I just want to show you a little video about Coke Industries and the, the, the vast products and services that we provide to our customers. industries started in the heartland and from our headquarters in Wichita, Kansas. We've expanded to almost every state and nearly 60 countries around the globe. Our products, businesses, and brands have evolved over the years, but our vision has stayed the same, to provide innovations that help people improve their lives. You might not always see our name on the things you use, but we work each day to help make products for better food, clothing, shelter, transportation, hygiene supplies, technologies, and other necessities. On top of that, we're taking responsibility to ensure that more resources will remain available for centuries to come. Our companies also produce and manage some very recognizable brands. Products such as Lycra Fiber, Brawny Paper Towels, Quilted Northern, Angel Soft Bath Tissue, Dixie Tabletop Items, Stain Master Carpet, and more. Our businesses are diverse, ranging from energy and biofuels, fibers, fabrics, and polymers to electrical components, fertilizers, glass, technologies for cleaner air and water, building products, consumer goods, and ranching. We find that these capabilities reinforce each other, helping us develop even better products. Our shareholders reinvest 90% of earnings back into our businesses, giving us the freedom to pursue even more opportunities to innovate and grow. We also strive to help thousands of people advance their careers. Coke companies employ more than 100,000 team members worldwide our market-based management business philosophy encourages employees to think like entrepreneurs and share their voices. Here, we build on each other's ideas to create more opportunities for people everywhere. Together, we are Coke. I always like to show that video for one. It gives, uh, get back here to this one. I'd like to show that video. When I transitioned out in 2004, I really didn't have an idea about Coke Industries, and I'm from Georgia, and I really didn't have a whole lot of knowledge around Georgia Pacific, which is in my state. So as I started uh, with Georgia Pacific uh, back in 2007, uh, I talked to the leaders in reference to my passion around helping those who are transitioning out of the military to find opportunities within our company. Uh, I want to share some other information as I'm flipping through here. One of the things that you heard others talk about, we have about 200,000 plus transitioning service members that's getting out annually. That's a lot of talent that you have the opportunity to, uh, to network with. I wanted to kind of share some information of 
what did we do in our space to attract talent, strategies to find a home for the veterans and service members within Coke Industries? And then Steve is going to come up and talk about a little about the skill bridge program and some of the other things we do. So one of the things that when we talk to the leaders, going back to the skill bridge and why that came about in 2013, 2014, as Eddie mentioned, we had a lot of service members that we brought into the military, very excellent in training and developing, but we did not do a good job of exit, getting them prepared to go back to the civilian workers. At that time, they started developing these Department of Defense said they called nonprofits, profits, employers together. What can we do to help these service members find employment and give them the skills so they will have a job? Because they don't want to be unemployed, they want to find work. So that's when the skill bridge programs kind of came about. Coke Industries said, hey, listen, we want to take part in that in helping those who serve. Our goal is to attract and recruit transitioning service members, the military spouses, veterans, disabled veterans, student veterans, National Guard and Reserve for opportunities within Coke Industries. One of the things we ask ourselves, okay, we talked about mission oriented. First, we had to identify what, what's gonna be our mission. So collectively, we uh, I got the team into, I call it our war room, uh, took them back to boot camp. We kind of came together and hey, we kind of, it's out what's going to be our mission for us to be successful. One of the things that we had to ask ourselves also, what is our reputation in the military community? Like I mentioned, I retired. I didn't know anything about coke industry. So what we had to do, one, is to change that. How do we become a military-friendly employer? As Andy mentioned in his presentation, for us, we had to get connected to those organizations that are on the front lines helping those service members, spouses, transition and to find work. So one tip I would ask you, you gotta get involved with those organizations. Do a little bit of homework, get connected to these organizations, join some of those organizations. That's how you get your name, your uh, school in front of those transitioning out. The other thing that we had talked about and we went to this four pillars right here. What are the things that's required for us? We know our audience. So the four pillars that we kind of identified was to attract. How do we attract those in the community to our company? Recruit. We recruit those, we assist those as <coughs> coaches and mentors transitioning from military to civilian sector. We help them with resume writing, interview techniques, just the basic things of, as uh, Colonel mentioned, just the clothes you wear for interview. How do you dress? So, some simple things you would think they would know, but again, they've been in we've been in uniform 24 seven, so those things you really need to talk about. Even benefits. Uncle Sam has been taking care of us for benefits, so they have no idea about the medical dental, so we're doing that coaching. We also, doing our process, we educate our recruiters and our leaders on the talent. There's over 15,000 military, occupational, specialties, career fields within all the branches. For every job in the civilian sector, there's a match pretty close in the military. So we have to educate the supervisors of what are those jobs that we need and what are those transferable skills coming from the military that we need to identify. You just can't throw a rock in, in the river and hope to get something. You've got to be specific on your task. So you need to know your talent. I'm going to give you a, uh, a website that I've shared with recruiters and leaders. So if you write this down real quick. This website is called O-N-E-T online, o -N -E -T online .com. We share this with the transitioning service members and spouses. We also share this with recruiters, and I share this with leaders. If you're looking for talent to bring into your organization, if you go to their website, you can go over to the crossover, or there's a find button, put in the job title. 
you put in your job title, it'll spit out for you uh, results from the, the Bowman search by branch, what's the job military occupational specialty to match the job. So if I'm looking for an HR manager or HR specialist, I can pull that, put, put that in, and it'll tell me by code rate what the job is and a description of that job. You've got to get educated in this space. So that's one of the things we did. So we talked about the attract and recruit. The other thing is the integration. You've got to set up some type of program or some network as you look to bring this talent into your organization. How do you integrate them taking the uniform off and now stepping into the civilian sector? In the military, we talked about the team concept. That team concept includes the family. Mm -hmm. A lot of time a service member, when they're stationed at a location, they have on the base, there's a network within our group, tight-knit group. Service members and spouses are within that group. When they leave that, they feel all alone. I don't have anyone to talk to. I don't have anyone who's shared my experiences. So they may feel as though they may be out there in the ocean by themselves. Establish an organization or a team to help them to integrate to your organization and check on them. Sign them a mentor, follow up with them. Integration. The last phase, and this is a, again, this is the recruiting life cycle. If you're HR, you're kind of familiar with this. The other part is retain. How do you keep them in your organization? What are you doing to ensure that they're staying engaged, they're fighting for fulfillment? In the military, for us, we may have a job title but we do a lot of things. So we are diverse in our skill sets with just one job type. Now, I was an infantry person coming out of the military, but I was a training developer, I was an army recruiter, <coughs> I was a physical fitness, uh, master fitness. So I did some other things. I also worked with the National Guard doing their uh, non-commissioned officers academy. So I was a facilitator and instructor. So I've done quite a bit just one title as infantry. You think, okay, the person in infantry is gonna be someone in law enforcement when they come out because they're dealing with weapons and tactics. It's totally the opposite. So you've, you've gotta kinda of do your homework and understand on that life cycle, if you bring them in, you gotta keep them. You gotta make sure they're for people. So you make sure you stay connected. So I have some notes. I wanted to share with you as I heard some of the other folks talk. Uh, on that online. I think that was it. Before I turn it over to Steve, he's going to talk about uh, some of the things we did on our initiatives of some of these programs we want to target. And Steve's going to talk about that. Any questions from the group for me before I pass it over to Steve? No questions. All right, Steve's all yours, sir. So a couple of things. One about about myself. So we're talking about National Guard soldiers and different things like that. Okay, I'm that non-traditional National Guard soldier, right? I'm still currently serving in the Alabama Army National Guard. Okay, so last week I was known as Sergeant Major Tillery. This week I'm known as Steve Tillery, Program Manager for Coke Industries. Right? And so it's a dual hat that you wear. I'm institutionalized. So what that means is I know it, I don't know anything else other than working two jobs my whole life right for the past 36 years so there's a lot of different variations that soldiers and all that come into you know come into play or service members i should say because we have air marines you know coast guard navy and stuff like that so the piece to that let's take keep some things in perspective real quick 99 percent of the american population has never served in the military so this whole thing that we're talking about right now is only 1%, okay, 1%. So what we have to do at Coke Industries and stuff like that on the military team is we have to educate, right, our civilian counterparts who has never served in the military, how those individuals bring value to your company, value to your business, okay? And sometimes that can be frustrating because we speak two different type of languages. Right, 
on that end of it. And so that's kind of the, the, the kind of the, the you know lead way into some of the things that we've attacked. Eddie said earlier, look, you know how many skill bridge programs or skill, career skill programs out there? You can throw a rock and hit one. Okay, so one of my tasks is is to go out there for code and evaluate the program that I think brings best value to our organization. Okay, so that's my suggestion to you, right, is evaluate that program that brings the best to your organization. Okay, so we're, we're global, right? We're all across the United States. I've got West Coast companies, I've got East Coast companies, right? On that end, and so what programs can I utilize that can bring me a lot of candidates to cover all of my areas? Well, a couple of years ago, Vic says, hey, Steve, you know, why don't we go check out the student veteran space, right, on that end of it. How many of y'all at Auburn University know that you have student veterans at Auburn University, right? Okay, a lot of individuals do not know that. And so one of the things that we went out to, and you'll see Student Veterans of America, that is one association. But as I came through and I learned, oh, wait a minute, that's just a small piece of the pie. Every university or college has some sort of universe, some sort of veterans organization within the, within that group that might not be, you know, with that student veterans of America, or have a small represent, representation of that. So what I do is go through and go talk to the co different colleges and universities across the United States and go look at what veterans organizations are really good. So can sustain, you know, has a lot of candidates, and what are we looking for out of our candidates, whether it's engineers, whether it's accounting, right? Whatever that, whatever that role is that we're looking for, the business need will say, hey, Steve, you know, we need, right now, engineers, we need accountants, you know, we need IT, okay? And so then I'll go look for those three things, right? And I'll go out there and look. So we just got to go into NatCon, you know, uh, this past January, and so it had college and universities all over the United States that attended. All right, and so one of the things that we picked up, just to kind of give you a gauge, so we picked up a student from, from the University of Iowa. Okay, she's National Guard. She's a chemical engineer. Okay, she needed an internship. So so what happens, we have one in Palakka, Florida, right? So how does a National Guard soldier get an internship in Placa, Florida and still make their Iowa National Guard commitments, right? That goes to me and Vic and our team educating the business of what interstate transfers look like, split IDT drill weekends and stuff like that. How do we make that successful, right, on that organization? So you kind of got to go in and take a look at your audience and stuff. The other thing that I did is go in and say, okay, cope. You know, because we're, we're big on humility on, our, on that end of it, of, about saying the things that we've done wrong. Okay, so Auburn University is in our college network. We have about 15, 16 college networks, you know, uh, throughout the nation. And so we recruit heavily at Auburn. You know, whether it be the Georgia Pacific shirt that you might see, whether it be the Coke industry shirt that you might see, well, we come out here all the time. But our recruiting team, which is made up of civilian, didn't realize that they have a big student venture group here. So one of the things that we do, you know, in our positions is educate our own recruiting teams to say, hey, let's go after the student veterans too, right? Because the military is the most diverse organization, I would challenge you, in the United States, okay? Why are we not looking at them? So I would challenge the business, why are we not looking at this organization here? Why? You know, well, we don't know, the, the, all, they're, they're all the degrees. They're one shut, stop shop for us. Why are we not going there, you know? And so we go through and we start talking to the businesses and the, and the, and the recruiters and stuff like that. Hiring our heroes. So hiring our heroes, I'll put a plug for them. We talked about earlier about the skill bridge programs and stuff like that, about getting uh, individuals come in on that end. So we have Hire Heroes uh, program managed throughout the United States. 
is one of the things that we really like in our organization. It's about a 12 week program, right? And, and so we can bring them in. So we'll get a list of candidate pools, all right? So if you're not familiar with this program, we get a list of candidates. We go through and we go through and pick the candidates that we have, right? Or the ones that we want to interview, all right? Understand this, those candidates have other companies too interviewing them. So at the end, in that process, they're going to select who they feel like can get the best job with them, right? On, on that end. And so that's what they do. And so we'll go through that interview process and stuff. We will bring them on. They will do a 12 week internship with us at, the, at whatever location and stuff like that. And then at the end of the day, we will decide if they are a hire or not. Okay, but that's a two way street. Mm -hmm. They might not want to work with us. They might not think that we're a good fit for them. Okay, one thing I like about this, because traditionally, I don't know about other businesses, but not our business, we'll go in, we'll interview you, we'll inter two or three people will interview you, we'll spend about four hours, we might bring you down to the facility on that end of it, but total time about five hours and we take a leap of faith and we say hire. We haven't worked with you day one. Right? Why not get into something that you can do for 12 weeks? Right? On that end of it and start building those relationships. Right? Because I can tell you service members, they don't know what they don't know so they'll go in there most of the time and say, hey, these are the three locations that I want. <laughs> so when I look at that candidate list, I'll kind of look at the three locations but what I look at is the body of work. I look at their resume. Rank doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Okay, it's a civilian. I want to know what you did in the military. I'm going to look at that body of work, and then I'm going to reach out to you, and I'm going to say, hey, I know that you wanted to go to Tennessee, but I got this position here. Would you be interested in that? Okay, so I don't just take what they put out because a lot of times they don't know. They have no idea. Right? On that end of it. And so I will reach out to them and say, hey, would you be interested? Well, I'm not quite sure. Well, let me throw you the dollar figure. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> right? I am interested. Okay? And, and so that changes the game. Because again, they've been structured and stuff like that in their whole career. They don't really understand and stuff like that. And so we kind of help them on, on that piece. The other thing that I like about the program too is, is that their final move, if they're active like that, their final move to wherever they go, there's a no reload cost for us, relocation cost, okay? So if we do bring somebody into the program, like was mentioned earlier by Eddie, you know, different housing and stuff like that, a lot of times with us, we have a mobility team, we might bring somebody in and set them up like that for the 12 week on that end of it. The High Our Heroes also has a military spouse. You know, fellowship program. You want to talk about some people that's, that's got some stuff? These military spouses, holy cow. Attorneys, you know, because they're getting positions, they have to travel from state to state or from other parts of the country all over the place. So they're very flexible on what they've got. Oh, you don't think the military spouse is an engineer? They are. You know, they are, so if you're miss, if you're not looking at military spouses, you're missing the boat on this one, okay? Because they are highly qualified and extremely flexible because they have to relocate and they have to get positions to move like that pretty quick, okay? And you know what, I'm gonna tell you something. Deploying is easy, okay? Is easy. I got one thing I gotta do when I get over there. I ain't got to worry about my kids. I ain't got to worry about the grass. I ain't got to worry about nothing else, right? It's the, it's the person that I left behind that has to deal with the other stuff, the hard stuff, the day-to-day -day stuff. Everything else, I got, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm taken care of. Uh, Microsoft Service Academy, okay? And so the MSSA Academy, this is a this is a uh, an IT program. So Microsoft puts this on at no cost to the service members. They'll go in and they'll do a Microsoft uh, certification, and then and then they'll have all these Microsoft certifications. And a lot of times, our IT people will go in and take a take a look at all the other stuff that they have on the IT 
and the certification stuff, and then we can hire them outside that program. So a lot of service members that, hey, if they want their infantry and they want to do IT, they'll go to the Microsoft Service Academy, and it's no cost to them. And then the Heroes Make America program also, too. Okay, it's about a 12, 15 week program that they go in and they learn some sort of skill set. Okay, okay, now these two right here, the Service Academy and the Heroes Make America, that's not a internship type program that we bring in trial before we buy program, type program. Those two programs are, after they complete, are direct hires. Okay, then we'll look at the candidate list, We'll look at the resumes, we'll look at again the locations on that end of it, and then we say, hey, you know, we would like to interview you uh, on that note. And so those are some of the, the, the programs that we have. A lot of times you have to be careful because for a, an employer, some of them are no cost to the service member, but there are costs to the employer. Okay? And so, depending on what that is, certificate, stuff like that. And that's one of the things that we kind of look out for on that end of it. Is it, again, is it creating value for our company? I mean, if it is, and we're willing to pay that cost to get that individual in, okay. You know, but if we can get something else at a different type of cost, you know, this is a highly qualified individual, that's what we're going to do, right? And so those are some of the, some of the skill bridge initiatives and stuff like that that we go through on the student veterans uh, on that end of it. So does anybody have any questions out of me? Yes, ma'am. I have a son that's active duty Marine right now. And so like the Microsoft software and systems kind of thing. Yes, ma'am. Can he do that while he's still um, active duty or does it, does it have to go through the whole same process as the career? Um, it, the when they get ready to transition career? out, they will that's apply for that, that program, okay. right. Okay, I wasn't right. sure if it was all together or right. what. Right. Okay. And so the hiring our heroes, and we go back and touch back on the hiring our heroes. They just don't. They just don't let every anybody in those programs. Okay. All right. They select you to go into those programs, and so those individuals that are in those programs. Another thing, it's already gone through one filter of a selection process. We kind of hit on that a little bit earlier, talking about hey, you know, not all service members you know, or cut out for it. You know, these are already vetted a lot of times for us on that end of it too. And so we're getting a lot of highly skilled, trained individuals that are coming in. Any other questions? Great, thank you, I appreciate it.